Okay, good morning or good afternoon, grade six. Um, so today, uh, as you can see from the team post, our lesson is going to be about mean, median, mode, and range. Uh, I'm just going to very quickly go through uh, what it is that you need to do today first. Um, and then if you're happy and you feel quite confident with mean, median, mode, and range, you can just uh, begin your independent work on the tasks uh, that you're assigned. If you're not quite sure, you just want to have a little review, then after I've introduced the tasks, I'm going to uh, go through a couple of examples with you just to remind you how to do it. And then after you finish listening to that, you can use the guide to help you and you can then have a go at the two tasks that I've set for you today. So, uh, you'll see that there is this post on Teamy, and this is the one that you're going to be working through today. Uh, so the first thing to do, obviously, once you are happy and you think you know what to do, is to go to the unit guide, okay, and the link is on Teamy for you. That's the one I shared with you yesterday, and that has a couple of examples, a little walkthrough, and you can have a little read through of that. Um, once you feel confident, you go to the end of that post, and there is a short question for you to complete. When you when you get to that point, you're going to fill in the slides. Uh, so the slides are there's a link there. Hopefully, you've made your copy. That's the one you submitted to assignments yesterday, and there are just a short question for you to answer looking at findings in mean, median, and mode, and the data you can find in the guide. Once you've done that and you're happy with that, then the third thing to do is you can go to the post on Teamy. There is a link on the Teamy post. It's also in materials, okay? And you're gonna to go to that section and there is a short activity to do. When you finish the activity, so it's an online activity, you're gonna type in all the answers, you're gonna use your calculators to help you if you need to. Obviously, if you don't, can't find your calculator you can use the one on your laptop when you finish that you'll see that it asks you to put it into slide a1 so at the bottom of the page there'll be a progress box which tells you how well you did if you want to redo it then you can just refresh the page and you can start again and when you're finished you screenshot that box and submit it in your slides there's a little space in the in the slide a little box says insert photo here and just insert a screenshot. If you're not sure how to do a screenshot um, of just one section, what you do is at the same time you press Command, Control, Shift, and 4, and then you just make a box over what you want to screenshot, and then you can just paste that into the slides. Um, now, at that time, okay, while you're working on this independently, so after uh, about uh, let's say uh, two o'clock I'm two to five past two I'm going to be available on the whole group meet and that's the one in the document that I shared with you yesterday um, so this can just be a drop-in you don't have to join this unless you want to uh, ask questions if you're quite happy working then you can work independently but if you have any questions you can just drop in and you can ask me a question about what you're doing um, or anything you don't understand. If you finish all of that, then there are a couple of extra tasks if you want to do any extra work. Okay, so if you're happy uh, you and you think you, you've you obviously done a bit of practice or you've, or you've done this before or you, um, you have read the guide yesterday that I sent out, then feel free to have a go at those tasks. If you want a little bit of a refresh, then please stay on, on this video and I'm going to go through some examples with you of how to do mean, median, and mode. Okay. So let's do the mean first. So to, a mean average is the most common type of average we're going to use. And let's imagine we have four numbers. We have one, two, two, three, and four. So we've got five numbers there. And we're going to find the mean average of these five numbers. The first thing we need to do is we need to find what we call the sum. So we need to find the sum. Sum is where we add all the values up. So that would be 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. We have all these values called the sum. That's the total. Next thing we do is say, well, I need to divide that by how many numbers I have. So we divide by the number of values. In this, there's five numbers, so the number of values is five. 
So we divide all of this by 5. When we add up 1, 2, 2, 3, and 4, uh, that gives us 12. If we do 12 divided by 5, and we can do this on the calculator, if we do this on the calculator, it will give you an answer of 2.4. And that means that the mean average is 2.4. Okay. So that's the first type of average. Let's move on to the median. So the median is a central value. Let's use the same numbers again. 1, 2, 2, 3, and 4. Now let's imagine instead of getting them given to you like this, you got them given in a different order. 4, 2, 1, 2, 3. Okay. Now the biggest mistake students make is they say, oh, median is the central value or the middle value, and they just pick the one in the middle. But in this case, one is not the median value. Before we can find a median average, the first thing we need to do is we need to put them in order, from smallest to biggest. So it's the middle value of what we call ordered data. So here the middle value is 2. So 2 is the median average. Now when we do the median average sometimes we might have a small problem and the problem we normally face is if we have an even number of values. Let's take the same values again but let's imagine we added an extra number. We added a 6 as well. Now we've got six numbers, an even number of values. Now when we try and put these in order, one, two, two, three, four, six, we can see that if we were to try and find the middle number, it would go here where this dot is, but there's no number. Now where that dot is, we can see there's three numbers on the left and three numbers on the right. But there's no number that would go where that dot is in the middle. So what we can do is we can add an imaginary extra number. We keep the 1, the 2, and the 2. We keep the 3, the 4, and the 6. If we were going to put a number in the middle here, it would have to be exactly halfway between 2 and 3. 2 and 3, halfway between them, would be 2 and a half. How do we find that 2 and a half? Well, we take the two numbers either side and we add them together. But once you've added them together, we have to divide them by 2. This would give us 5 divided by 2, and that gives us 2.5. So with the median, if there's an odd number of values, so we've got five numbers here, you just pick the one in the middle, once they're in order, from smallest to biggest. If you have and even numbers, like six numbers, or eight numbers, or ten numbers. You line them up again, but you have to insert an imaginary number, and that number you put in is the median. Finally, we have the mode. That's the third average. There's also range. We'll do that in a second. The mode is a nice, straightforward one. Let's go back to the same numbers again. When you've got the mode average, all you're doing is you're picking the one you have the most of. Let's imagine we had a little table. We've got one, two, three, and four. We can talk about a word called frequency, how many of each number that we have. We've got a one, two twos, one three, and one four. We can see that we have more twos than any other number. So the mode average is 2 because it's the one which we have the most of. Finally we have the range. Now the range is not an average. The range measures how spread out the data is. If the range is really big that means that there's a big difference between the, all the numbers. If we have a small range it means the numbers are close together. Let's take our numbers. Let's do the one where we have the 6 as well. 
The range measures the distance from the smallest to the biggest. The bigger that number is, the further they are apart. Here, if we wanted to find that distance, we know that there's 5 between 1 and 6. We say the biggest number minus the smallest value. So we say 6 is the biggest, we take away the 1, and it gives us 5. The range is 5. If we were to change this number here, let's imagine we put a 20 here at the end, then it would be 20 minus 1, so the answer would be 19. So we use the it's the difference between the biggest and the smallest. Now the final thing we can do is we can look at these values when they're in a table. Now tables make it slightly harder to do. Let's imagine we looked at some football matches and we looked at how many goals are scored in each game. So we made ourselves a table. We talk about frequency, which if you remember, is how many times something happens. So let's imagine I looked at 25 games of football. In some of the games, no goals were scored. In some of them, one goal, two goals, three goals, and four goals were scored. Let's imagine I said in two of the games, no goals were scored. Six of the games had only one goal. Twelve of the games had two goals, four of the games had three goals, and one of the games had four goals. Well, if you think what we need to know, if we're going to work out the averages, we need to know a couple of things. So first of all, what we might want to know is the total number of goals scored. Now, in the first set of games, there's no goals scored twice. So I would say, well, there's no goals happened twice. That's no goals altogether. In the games with one goal scored, that happened six times. So in total, those games yielded six goals. Then there were two goals per game for 12 games. That means a total of 24 goals were scored during those games. Three goals per game four times, that would be 12 goals in total. And four goals per game, once, would be four goals. It's really important that you add that extra column. Okay, It's going to make what we're going to do in a second much easier to do. So you've added that extra column, Okay, and let's see how we can use that to find our different averages. So we've got this table here. We can now say that all together we had 0, 6, 24, 12 and 4. We can add those five numbers together and that gives us a total of 46 goals. This happened in 25 matches. Now we don't add up this column because that's just telling us how many goals per game, but we know that that's more of a category than anything else. So the first thing we could do is we could find the mode. The mode, as we know, is the most common. So it's just going to be the game with the highest frequency. We can see that most often two goals were scored per game. So the mode average would be two goals. We can then work out the mean. Well, we know that there were 46 goals scored in 25 matches. And when we do that on our calculator, we divide the 46 goals by 25 matches, that gives us 1.84 goals. 
Now the median is slightly more difficult. The median average from a table is the hardest one to do, okay? And at this stage, I'd like us to try, but I'm more concerned about us finding the mean and the load. Okay, but we're gonna, I'm gonna show you anyway how to find the median. Okay, and this one involves a little bit of counting. So, let's go back to our table. We know that the median is in the middle. If you think about 25, you lined up 25 numbers, which number would be in the middle? Well, if half of 25 is 12 and a half, but we don't have a 12 and a half number. But if you think about it, 25, the middle number is gonna have 12 numbers on the left and 12 numbers on the right, 24, and the middle number will be the 25th. So if you think about numbers from 1 to 25, if you pick the number 13, it's 12 up and 12 down to the smallest number. So we're looking for the 13th match. Okay. So what we can do is we can count from the smallest to the biggest. First of all, we can do a little tally here. We know that there were two matches with no goals. Then there were one, two, three, four, five, six matches with one goal. So we said two matches and then another six. Now there were 12 matches. So at the moment we're at the eighth match. But we need to find the 13th. So we need to count on five more. And as you can see, the next one, I'll do it in red for you. I'll do the, we're going to say there is two goals, two goals, two goals, two goals, two goals. And there is the 13th mark. And the 13th mark was two goals. So the median is two. Okay. Finally, we're going to look at doing the range. And the range is not too bad. The range, remember, you, it's really useful when you're doing a table to think of it from smallest to biggest. So as we can see, the smallest number was no goals. The highest number was four goals. So the biggest was four, smallest was zero. Four goals is the range. Okay. So from a table, it's slightly different, but just remember it's the same data as if we were looking at something like this, except it's been put together in a table. Frequency tells you how many times something's happened. The first column tells you what's happening. So for example here, zero goals twice is zero goals altogether. Two goals 12 times is 24 goals altogether. Okay. Now if you missed any of that, obviously you can go back and watch this video again. Uh, I'm going to be available on the the meet and I'm going to be able to display, just like I was doing then, a blank page to you and we can write over the top of it together and have a conversation. Um, and also in the guide, these examples have been shared and I've written out all of the steps for you. So what I'd like you to do now is to go back to that guide. You may want to have another read. If you're feeling like you kind of think you're okay and you want to get started, go to the bottom of the, today's A1 section of the guide. And there is a question uh, which you're going to fill in on the slide, which talks about David and his carrier bags. Very exciting stuff. So I would like to read that question and have a go at it in the slides, the copy that you made so that I can see it on the assignment that we did. Okay. So remember, look at the guide if you need extra help. Make sure you do the question in the slides before you start the activity. The activity is on the team page under materials, the unit link is on the main uh, body of team when you and it should have given you a notification as well. And I'm going to be available on the Google Meet group link 
If you need to drop in and ask a question, feel free to do so, but you only need to drop in if you have a question to ask. So uh, I'm going to finish this video here. Hopefully uh, this has all made sense. And please now back to Teamy, find the links and start on the independent work task. Bye.